Do you have an ESL student, English as a second language, that you're trying to help learn to read and Spanish is actually his or her mother tongue? For today's video, I'm going to be assuming that he or she has some notions of reading in Spanish. If you're dealing with a student in that situation, or if you're personally in that situation yourself with your kid at home, then this video is for you. Because in today's video, I'm going to go through how learning to read is normally approached in Spanish-speaking countries and how it is different from the way it's approached in English-speaking countries. What I believe can be troublesome for these students, what can be really confusing of the English system to literacy, if you wish, what sounds and letters have the potential of being especially problematic for these students, and what English and Spanish have in common, apart from obviously having the same alphabet, the Roman alphabet, and what other areas you'll need to reinforce. By the way, before we get started, I am Laura, and this is the Learning Reading Hub. I created this channel back in 2020 when I was teaching my first time to read in English and everything was super confusing. I got really deep into this topic because of course I wanted to help her and the common guidelines given to us didn't seem to work. It was all about sight words instruction and about memorizing words. At least that was the case for us, that was like three years ago, and that was the case in Australia where we were living. So she was very confused and I was very confused, but the thing is that she was able to read quite decently for her age in Spanish. Anyway, we ended up figuring things out in English as well, not with sight words by the way, just the opposite, using phonics, the same system that is used in Spanish, but obviously with a few tweaks. It turned out to be a great bonding experience for us, in a way an experience that sort of transformed our lives, and I guess that's the reason why this channel even exists. It was at the time when the whole world was in lockdown, so one way or another we families had to get involved in our children's education big time even if that wasn't the plan for many families. Anyway, I do not want to extend on this topic today, but my point here was that I actually taught my first daughter to read in Spanish first, English second. This is not what I'm doing with my second one, but that's a story for another day. Let's get into today's topic now. So how is reading taught in Spanish-speaking countries? To be honest, everything starts in the same way, learning letter sounds. Many of these letter sounds are going to be very similar to the sounds letters have in English, so that's great. Anyway, once children know their letter sounds, they can start blending. However, and this is a key difference, learning to read is normally approached at the syllable level in a spot. Okay, what does this mean? Rather than sounding out words, sound by sound, as we do in English, for instance, m, a, t, Math. In Spanish, children are normally trained from the very beginning to actually sound out words in chunks of two sounds at a time and later on three sounds at a time. So what are these chunks? Why do we do this? These chunks are actually the syllables in words and that is why I say blending is approached at the syllable level. Okay, I'm not sure if this is clear enough, I'm going to try to clarify this with an example, but let me know if you have questions in the comment section, because this is really tricky to explain and there are many things to get your head around. Okay, example. What I'm trying to say is that children are not trained to say m, a, ma, but ma, straight away, or m, e, me, but me straight away, etc, etc. So in order to do that, children normally learn their vowel sounds first, that's the very first thing they learn, and then when they are introduced to consonant sounds, they go like this. Okay, so say today we are learning the letter M, it says M, now let's try M with all the vowel sounds. Ma, me, mi, mo, mu or the letter B, ba, be, bi, bo, bu. You may have noticed some difference with the vowel sounds, by the way, they are not the same vowel sounds that we have in English. That's going to be one of the challenges for these children, but I'll talk about that later on. 
Let's come back to the previous point, blending at the syllable level. I just want to clarify very quickly here that we are not memorizing these syllables. We're still using phonics. It doesn't make sense not to use it, especially in such a phonetically regular language as Spanish is. But for faster reading, children are normally trained to immediately say ma, me, mi, mo, mu, ta, te, ti, to, tu, okay? Very similar to successive blending in English, if you are familiar with this technique. If you're not, let's not overcomplicate today's video talking about it, because in fact there are other videos in the channel where I explain in detail what this technique is all about. Um, for instance, this one over here, I'll make sure to leave you links in the bio as well if interested. Why do we do this in Spanish? Why do we take this shortcut of, let's call it, pre-blending two sounds when we are learning to read? The first one is that vowels in Spanish only say one sound. So the combination of M plus A is always ma. There aren't long vowel sounds, A is always short, it always says ma. The second reason, I think, is that there are way more syllables ending up with a vowel than syllables ending with a consonant. By the way, syllables ending up with a vowel are normally referred to as open syllables, and syllables that end up with a consonant are normally referred to as closed syllables. Anyway, in Spanish, most syllables are open, they finish with a vowel, in English, it's the opposite. Syllables ending with a consonant are the most common ones in English. On the other hand, in Spanish, there aren't so many really short one-syllable words as there are in English. You know, in English, there are lots of short CBC words, such as cat, mat, map, dog, log, fit, pet, etc. And these are the ones we normally use with our beginning readers, right? Spanish doesn't have so many of those. So using this strategy allows students to very soon, very fluently, start to read words formed by two open syllables. Remember, those are words with two syllables ending up with a vowel. These words would be the equivalent to English CVC words in terms of simplicity, this is one of the simplest word structures you get in Spanish. I know you're thinking, oh my god, two syllable words so soon? In general, words are longer in Spanish than they are in English. So yes, these words are pretty simple and short for Spanish standards. Look, just by knowing mame mi mo mu and ta te ti to tu, for instance, students can read simple words such as mamá, moto, tomo, meto, meta, mete, mimo, and way more. There's even a very famous sentence that you can read just by knowing ma, me, mi, mo, mu, which is, by the way, the first set of syllables we normally learn in Spanish. The sentence is mi mamá, me mima. Okay, this is great. But what does this mean for you if you're trying to help, as mentioned before, an ESL student that has learned to read in Spanish first? So this child is probably going to be very good at blending. The skill is sort of automatically there right from the very beginning, as I explained before. Very good, very positive theme, yeah, but at, at the same time, I believe there's a reason why you sound out words uh, sound by sound in English. And that is because letters, especially vowels, can say so many different sounds, right? So children uh, that learn Spanish first might just attempt to always read mame mi momu or babe bi bobu. Notice how I'm using the Spanish short vowel sounds because it's so deeply ingrained in them. Plus, it's going to be extremely confusing the concept that letters, especially vowels, say different sounds. Which brings me to the next point, by the way, confusing vowels. Confusion with vowels is a very common problem with children that speak Spanish and English. 
especially e and i. Ay ay ay. Yeah, up to this day, it's a problem in our house. If I say to my daughter, please write down chica, which means girl in Spanish, as you may already know, and it's spelled like this with an I, most likely I'm going to get Checa, which means a person from the Czech Republic. And I think I've explained this to my children, who knows, a thousand times now, a million times, still a problem, maybe more than a million times. I actually understand the confusion a hundred percent because it is extremely confusing. Look, in English, we call this letter E, and that's the actual name and the sound of this letter in Spanish. In Spanish, we call this letter E, and the sound is E as well. You see how extremely confusing this is? Actually, it's so extremely confusing that I'm going to recap. Letter name, E, sound, E. Letter name, E, sound, E. Letter name, E, sound, E. Letter name, I, sound, E. With the letters I and E, another super common problem among ESL students is not being able to hear the difference between E and E. I personally had to overcome this issue myself in the past at some point as a non-native English speaker by training my ears to hear the subtle difference. I know it's not subtle for native speakers. Um, I get it, it's not subtle for me anymore after a lot of training and repetitions and living in English speaking countries for, for I think 17 years now but I had to work on this. I didn't know the name of what I was doing at the time, but I know now that I was working towards my phonemic awareness skills, which is such a crucial skill. You probably already know that. Well, for ESL students, it is as crucial or even more. Otherwise, in their ears, ship and sheep, same thing. Fit and feet, same thing. I can hear the difference. I was not able to, I repeat, it is a very, very common problem. Watch out because this may happen to your ESL students as well. And for sure, this can have an impact in their reading skills and their spelling abilities in English. Another pair of confusing vowel sounds is U as in moon, U as in book. I know they sound very different to you, but for your ESL students, they may sound the same, unless you train them to hear the subtle difference. Finally, with vowel sounds, I know some ESL students have problems with the letter O, especially uh, with the American way of saying it, because it's not rounded, as it is in Spanish, and also in British English, and even Australian English. In American English, there is this jaw dropping, as in hard. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, forgive me if I'm not. Well, in British English, it's more like hot. That's very similar uh, to the sound of the letter O in Spanish. But I know many of you are watching this in the US and you have your ESL students in the US too. Okay, let's recap. Vowels, especially confusing for many reasons. The way they are pronounced is different and your students may have this, let's call it mame mi momu reflex and you'll have to retrain this reflex and explain that in English is ma me mi mo or ma ma. They may not be able to hear the difference between certain pairs of vowel sounds. Remember, we talked about e and i, u and i. Oh, and since they are not able to hear the difference, they will probably not be able to reproduce the sound to say the sound. Will children that have learned to read in Spanish first be used to letters saying more than one sound at all? Or will they just be in shock with this? Does this ever happen in Spanish? It does, but not as often as it happens in English. In Spanish, there's 
a soft and a hard sound for the letter C. Here we can say K or S or TH depending on the accent. And by the way, the rules are the same in English and Spanish. That is hard sound when the C goes before A O U. Soft sound when the letter C goes before E or I. There is a soft and a hard G sound as well. G or H. I know, very hard to replicate. It comes from Arabic. A soft and a hard sound for the letter R, L or R. And the letter Y can say Y or E. And I think that's it. However, take advantage of what we have in common. For instance, the rules for hard C and soft C are the same and the same goes for soft G and hard G. They are the same. Okay, moving on, digraphs. Will this concept be new to ESL students? Not really. I mean, they probably won't know that they are called digraphs. But in Spanish, we have a few. C plus H sounds ch, very similar to the ch sound, which is also represented by the letters C and H. Even though you may have noticed, there's a subtle difference in pronunciation. At least in my variant of Spanish, which is, I say, pretty neutral, Spanish from Spain. Double R sounds rrr, as in carro. What about different letters saying the same sound? Is it something you have in Spanish at all? Yes, but very rarely. We have the letters B and V. Many Spanish speakers don't make a distinction here. They always pronounce it B. I am one of those speakers, by the way. We have the letters C and S. Many speakers don't make a distinction here. They always pronounce S. I am not one of those. I do make a distinction here. Then we have the letters C and Z. In my way of speaking Spanish, they both sound some other Spanish speakers say S. Okay, moving on, silent letters. Will children know what this is or again, will they be in shock by the fact that there are some letters you put on the paper but you don't pronounce? They won't be shocked, but honestly, I can only think of two letters in Spanish where this happens. We have the letter H as in hola or yerba. We don't ever pronounce this letter in Spanish anymore. It used to be pronounced in old Spanish and it now remains in written language, but we never ever pronounce it. Notice how English does the same thing sometimes with some words starting with H, by the way, such as our or honor or herb for many people. We also have the letter U in words like guitarra or guerra. Guerra. We have them there for a reason, by the way. They are there to stop the letter G from saying its soft sound. And this rule, believe it or not, you have it in English as well. And then we have silent U after the letter Q and we pronounce queso, kiosco. We don't say queso, kiosco. And I think that's about it with silent letters in Spanish, actually. What about consonant blends? Spanish has consonant blends, but they are not taught explicitly in the same way that they should probably not be taught explicitly in English, but that's a story for another day. What about double letters? Are there double letters in Spanish? Not so many. We have double L and double R, and that's about it. Don't really double letters. Plus, there are rules for these. In fact, double L and double R are digraphs as I explained before, meaning that these two letters team up to represent a new sound. What about vowel themes? There aren't any vowel themes in Spanish. Vowels never team up to say another sound that is different from their original sound. This is why a Spanish speaker might attempt to read this as green or this as rain. Okay, so we've been through a lot in this video. We've seen what's common in English and Spanish when it comes to learning to read and what's not. We've been through confusing sounds. We've seen if certain concepts such as digraphs, silent letters or vowel themes, etc. also exist in Spanish. But what are other challenges that ESL students will have to face? very similar to the ones that all children face, but maybe they are probably going to need extra support with vocabulary, 
having a rich vocabulary, as you probably already know, is a key component for reading success. Besides, it's also a key for reading comprehension. They are probably going to need extra support with phonemic awareness skills. Check if they can hear the right sounds in words. Remember, maybe they can't tell certain sounds apart. And until they don't hear the right sounds, they won't be able to reproduce them either. Ideally, it'd be great if they could get access to supporting Spanish as needed. Maybe they won't be able to understand everything in English. Maybe that can make them fall behind in class. And maybe just a quick explanation every now and again in their mother tongue will fix it. Okay, finally, I thought it'd be a good idea if we looked at the reading rope developed by Scarborough. This is a great diagram that summarizes everything that is involved in skills reading. So the upper strands represent the skills involved in language comprehension and the lower strands represent the skills involved in word recognition. When we automate these skills, we get skills reading. I've gone through them one by one and I'm going to highlight the areas now where I believe these students are likely to have more problems than their native counterparts. Background knowledge. Well, depending on the topic, say you're talking about something new they haven't seen before or something about the country you live in and they are brand new in the country, well, then it is likely they'll have more difficulties than their native counterparts. Vocabulary. Definitely something they'll need extra help with. Their English vocabulary will be smaller. Language structures. Again, something else to reinforce. Phonological awareness, definitely something where they'll need more help. However, it's not all bad for these students, not at all. Blending goes the same way, many letter sounds are very similar, the alphabet is the same. Besides, having the base of a Latin language can really help them out with spelling in the future. That's actually a great reason to learn a second Latin based language. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, that you found it useful. If that's the case, please give this video a like. It really helps out. And for more videos like this one, subscribe.